Last time is a camera, this time is a projector. Specifically, this is an old DLP projector. In case you forgot how a DLP projector works, the principle of operation is actually remarkably simple. The mirrors are microscopic, but they are real mirrors and they flip back and forth like this, uh, controlled electrostatically. So there's really only two positions and they're usually mounted on the spring instead of some kind of bearing so that they don't break off. But aside from that, all you need is the mirror itself, a lamp, and a lens. With everything in alignment, the light from the lamp will reflect off the mirror, go through the lens, and then onto our screen, which in this case is just the ceiling. But you get a situation where you either have your mirror reflecting light through the lens like this or not. And so the pixel on the screen will be dark. And that's really all it is. And then to change the color, you just put a different colored filter in front of the light like this. And now our pixel is green. And then you would have red, blue, maybe some other colors if you want to get fancy. Now, since the mirrors only have two states, you might be wondering how you can do different brightnesses. And as far as I can tell, they're not, you know, flipping back and forth like this super rapidly. But you might do something like, oh, if you only want half brightness on a frame, you put this on for half the frame and then off for half the frame. Might happen a couple times per frame, but I don't think it's like super fast PWM or anything. However, the real star of the show has to be the mirrors. Now, they're microscopic and sort of grown on a little chip, sort of like other MEMS devices. Now, this projector is pretty old, but its resolution is 1024 by 768. That means there's over 750,000 mirrors on a little tiny chip about the size of your thumbnail. That's still pretty impressive, but uh, what I wanna see is what one of those little mirror chips looks like to your eye while it's working. I know you've seen the diagrams and stuff on you know how it's supposed to work, but I've never actually seen what the chip looks like, and there really aren't very many videos out there that do show that. So I'm gonna try to do that here today, which is not gonna be easy because that's buried inside here somewhere. All right, let's see what we got. First up is a lamp, which like most projectors is an arc lamp. These are really bright, kind of fun, but they're really hard to deal with. Sort of like a cross between a camera flash and a welder. You have to be able to start the arc and then very carefully maintain it. So they have controller boards that they don't tell you how to control, and usually by the time these are in the garbage, they don't work anymore. This one does work, I think. And with any luck, there are the mirrors. Is this socketed? It is loose. Hmm. Now, as for the rest of the optical path, the lamp is over here. Goes down here, hits the mirrors, and then goes up through the lens, just like my demo. Except I did remove the color wheel, which goes in here with all the different colored filters on it. 
fact, with that cover removed, you can see it a little more clearly. Now, it's not a direct path. The, uh, there's this little mirror here that I broke off, and then it goes into some prisms and stuff. But, you know, mostly the same. Look here, right under this piece of tape, There's a little screw to bend this bracket back and forth to line that mirror that was on there. Of course, being optical, everything has to line up. Oops. Well, that didn't go so well. Now this piece, I think that, uh, so when the mirrors are not pointing on the screen, the light that reflects off them still has to go somewhere. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, it goes onto this piece of black face of this prism here and is conducted out through the thermal pad as heat. You'll also notice this sort of defect in here where the two prisms are glued together I believe that's what I was seeing um, in the projection when this thing was working. That's probably why they threw it away. I don't think we're getting that lens either. Alright, so the only thing I need off this is this plate. Hold the DLP chip on. Something else I've noticed when taking apart these uh, DLP devices Whatever this metal is that's used for the light guide, it's always really light, like lighter than aluminum. So it could be magnesium. Well, it's not magnesium. Well, anyways, it's mostly the electronics that we're interested in. Also, I put the uh, micro mirror chip back together. You know, for being a mirror, it's really not all that reflective. But that's probably because it's almost a million mirrors. I've also noticed in every DLP device I've taken apart, there's always this heat sink on the DMD chip. Now that's probably because this is getting hit with a whole bunch of really bright light and not because the chip itself produces heat, but uh, we'll soon find out. And it's just thermal padded on there. Oh. It's like a capped on coating for insulation. But there is no socket, it is just spring loaded pins. Seems like it could come out of this. Oh, it's double. So there's pads on this and on this. And then it needs this carrier. And here's the little color wheel. 
something interesting about these is that the color that reflects off of them is the opposite of what color they actually filter. But yeah, this is where the colors come from. Looks like on this one we got blue, red, yellow, green, and white. It's kind of hard to see with the exposure here, but... Is that blue light? Nope, it's green. And yes, each one of those filters is a separate piece of glass. So we definitely don't want to break any of them. Now, all of this, all of the fans, the color wheel, all these little temperature sensor things, everything on here has to be connected up for it to work, or else the projector will complain that something is broken. So for instance, the lamp has to be lit because it can tell if this is burned out. Also, time for just an obligatory generic warning about high voltages and stuff. Now you have mains voltage going in, the lamp power supply and stuff. If I'm not mistaken, this can go into the hundreds of volts. So yeah, be careful. So the power supply, oh, we get five volts, five volts, 12 and a half volts, negative five volts and 380 volts. Ooh. And probably the one we want to keep an eye on the most is the lamp to make sure it doesn't overheat. So I've taped the original fan on the intake here with super melty electrical tape. So we'll see how long that lasts for. All right, moment of truth time. Power on. And then it should just be this button. Or maybe not. Says red, I don't know what that means. Nope, it turns out I just had this cable on upside down. So let's try that again. Power on. Now we get yellow. There it goes. Oh, I can actually see the mirror. Wow, that light is bright. I may have to do something about that. I've decided that this little fan just doesn't put enough, enough air. So I'm changing to this fan and the lamp there, I took it further apart. And I have a piece of safety paper to help protect my eyes. I did remove the front of the lamp cover, which has this little covering in there, which hopefully is just to keep the air inside and has nothing to do with any kind of UV filtering, although I'm pretty sure arc lamps like this don't emit much UV. Amazingly, it's all working. And if you look closely, that is the Windows desktop, except it's mirrored and upside down, but you know. And here's some paper, you can see it a little bit better. Now let's try to get something on it. It's really hard to do. 
It's not only is it really tiny, it's also upside down. All right, I got one. So there it is with a video playing. It's almost impossible to see because it's so small. Put the paper back in. It's not too bad. Change the angle. Go up just a little bit. Now it's inverted. It's really interesting to look at this because there's absolutely no backlight coming out of it at all. Kind of like you're looking at a really high resolution graphing calculator screen or something with an unusually high frame rate. Pose another question to ask is if I look at it through the color wheel, will it be in color? I mean, it should be. Gotta get the angle correct. Come on, in the focus. And sure enough, it is. It's not especially vibrant, though, is it? Well, I suppose all I can do now is try my microscope, although I kind of doubt we'll see anything. And to answer my question from earlier, the Micromere chip is stone cold. Oh, I think we just lost the set screw. And never mind, it fixed itself. All right, well, I'm gonna do a quick thermal camera image and then I think I'll call it for the DLP projector. See you next time.